So after you've gone ahead and drawn the top, the front, and the side view, uh, including all the hidden lines, a um, couple things that we're gonna have to do before we start to annotate this. Now, the very first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make sure that we check everything for completeness. So you can see that all the hidden lines are included, everything's to scale, and everything's recreated exactly as illustrated in the actual activity itself. Okay, so from there, what I'm gonna do here is darken the actual the object itself. The reason why we just darken the object itself is so it stands away or stands apart from say the dimensions or any notes or the title block and all those kinds of things. And so in order to darken this particular uh, top view here, what I like to do is I like to actually put my pencil right on there. And in doing so, then I'm just gonna apply more pressure. Now, if we had proper pencils, then what we would do is go with like a darker type of lead that transfers. Now, as you darken this particular object, it's really important to remember that you don't have any double lines or overlapping lines because then the diagram seems a little bit more confusing from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and darken this. And again, it's always good to put your pencil at the right angle, then line up your T-square, and then just go ahead and darken. And remember, you have to do this for all three views. Do not darken though the hidden lines. They do not require to be darkened. Now I do have a bit of a double line here, so I will have to go back and I'll have to fix that. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna keep on going and continue just to darken the top view. Okay, so that's this top view all darkened. Again, I'd have to do the same for the front view as well as the side view. Now, what we're gonna now do is take our attention and focus it onto the title block right over here. Now, with regards to the title block, if you recall from the first video, we have, to have, we have to have four components. We have to have a name, a date, a scale, and a title. Now, when we include those in there, we have to write in all capital letters. But before we do that, we have to use this little device right over here, which is called an Ames lettering guide. Now, I know this little device has a little spinning wheel on it and it has a bunch of dots or holes in it. Now, this is not for drawing letters. It's only for drawing parallel lines. Um, so you can actually put your letters or draw your letters between those parallel lines. Now, we're not gonna worry about the circle here. We're just gonna pay attention right over here to this line of dots right over here. Now, we're gonna always use hole number one and hole number two, holes number one and two to draw our parallel lines for everything except for the title. Now the distance between the first hole and the second hole is three millimeters. And then the first, the distance from the first hole to the third hole is six millimeters. Now we use the first two holes for everything, but we use holes one and three when it comes to the title. So here's how this works. Now, before you use this though, make sure you have a super sharp pencil. Clicky pencils do not work for this. So I've gone ahead and I've already sharpened my pencil here. I'm gonna take my T-square. I'm gonna line it up right over here. And now what I plan to do is I plan to go ahead and very, very lightly draw parallel lines using holes one and two. Same thing over here, I'll do the same. And if you're putting too dark, or sorry, too heavy of pressure, you can also go back and erase. Now, as far as the title block goes, it really doesn't matter um, what order you have the components, the name, title, scale, and date, as long as they're in there. Okay, so if you recall, I did say that everything has to be with uh, holes one and two or three millimeters apart, except for the title. So the title is going to be six millimeters. So I plan to use holes one and three. And you can see right over here that the distance between my two parallel lines is increased or double. There for sure will be the title. Now, if you don't have one of these Ames lettering guides, you'll have to measure manually with a ruler uh, the distance of three millimeters for everything, and then use your T-square to create those um, parallel lines. Okay, 
So in all capital letters, we're going to give this a title, and we're going to call this GeoBlock. Now, drafting in all capital letters is a standard for architectural, industrial, and mechanical design. So think of this as grade one. We're supposed to print very, very legibly between the lines with all uppercase letters. And you can see that I probably had to draw my lines a little bit longer through the box here. Now, you can go ahead and put your name in here and you can put the date in here, whether you use uh, letters or numbers, uh, or, or sorry, if you like write out, say, September, um, you can do so, or you can just represent the month by a number. So that's up to you. Now, the scale in all capital letters, if you recall, is one to one. And the reason why it's going to be one to one is because everything that we're drawing is for one millimeter here, it's gonna be manufactured the same in real life, okay? So again, finish off your title block by adding the name, and also don't forget to add in uh, the date. Okay, so let's turn our attention to measurements now. Now, as far as measurements go, there's a very specific way of doing it. And yes, you will be required to still use the Ames lettering guide in this particular case. Now, the measurements have to be, the very first row of measurements has to be 15 millimeters away from the object. And when you do the measurements, you also have to be very specific in terms that the measurement lines don't touch the actual object themselves. And from there, there's also a specific way of labeling the measurements. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, take my T-square, measure out 15 millimeters away from the object. So there it is. I'm going to draw a very, very light line. Make sure your measurement line does not touch the object. The reason why we don't want it to touch the object is simple. We don't want to get it confused with the object, which is another reason why we darken it. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to measure 15 millimeters just like I did before. And so from here to here is 15 millimeters, but make sure it does not touch the object. And I'm going to come over here because I want to get a measurement for this part too. Also, the hidden lines, we do not have to worry about the measurement themselves. You don't measure hidden lines in this case. All right, so taking my T-square, I'm going to draw a horizontal line, leaving a small little gap for the measurement. Same thing over here. I'm going to leave a small little gap for the measurement, just like that. If my lines are a little too close, I can just open up the gap just a little bit more. So going back to this Ames lettering guide here, I'm gonna again use holes one and two to draw very, very light lines that are parallel so I can put my measurements in between them. And they're a very specific height. Okay, so if I refer to the assignment itself in the object, or if I can just take a measurement, I know that this is 80 millimeters. So when I do write in 80 millimeters, I'm just writing in 80. Don't put the MM, leave it exactly like this. We assume that all the numbers in mechanical or industrial engineering are always in metric or millimeters. So same thing with this. I'm gonna measure this, this is 30. So I'll just write 30 between the lines just like that. Now, I, of course, I can do the math. I can go 80 plus 30, and I know that's 110, but you can also do the overall length if you want. If you do want to stack your measurements, always make sure that you put your smaller measurements closest to the object, and then if you stack those measurements, it's not going to be 15 millimeters, but only 10 millimeters this time. Again, this is an architectural, or sorry, a uh, engineering drafting standard, and something that you have to know a little bit about. Okay, so let me just measure this and get this all in line. And after I got this all lined up here, and I know that my T-square is catching the edge of the paper, that's why I'm kind of having a bit of problems with it. I'm going to measure 10 millimeters. Oh, that's completely off. 
I'm gonna try doing this as vertically as possible. Okay, just like that. Okay, so remember, 15 millimeters, leaving a gap. And then if I'm stacking my measurements, then what I need to do is put the longest measurement on the outside, only 10 millimeters or one centimeter away. Just like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna come across, leave a gap in the middle. All right, using my Ames lettering guide with a very sharp pencil, I'm gonna use the first two holes. And I know that the total is 110. I'll just race this line just a little bit. Okay, not quite done yet. I have to put small little arrowheads in black to say that the distance between here and here is 30, and little arrowheads over here to specify the distance from here to here is 80. Same thing over here. Now the cool thing about adding measurements is you have three different views in which you can add measurements to. The rule of thumb in design when you're uh, drafting, even using a computer program, is you have to provide enough measurements for the object to actually be um, you know, manufactured. So uh, don't forget, do not measure the hidden lines. You have three views where you can actually get the detail that's actually showing or visible. And if you can, try to always put the measurements on the outside. So I definitely use my front view and my side view to also include the measurements here. Um, so for example, instead of trying to measure from here to here with a hidden line, I could actually use this space instead. And I would just maybe just have it out over here, right? So we can actually see what the measurement is from here to here. And I just put that outside measurement right over here. Um, So I've kind of jumped ahead here and what I've done is I've also used the Ames lettering guide, again using holes one and two or drawing uh, the parallel lines three millimeters apart to actually label my views. So here's my top in all capital letters, here's my front and here's my side. So go ahead and do that once you've got all your measurements in place. So to wrap up the video here, um, finish your title block. Remember, everything with the Ames lettering guide, you're using the first two holes or three millimeters apart if you don't have one except for your title, which is six millimeters apart. Make sure you include all the dimensions. You've got three views in which to do so. Make sure all your dimensions are 15 millimeters away from the object, and those measuring lines don't touch the object so we don't confuse them. And if you are stacking measurements, it's always your smaller ones closest to the object and your longer ones stacked uh, 10 millimeters or one centimeter apart. And then if you haven't already done so, make sure you also darken your object, excluding the hidden lines. So go ahead, finish off the activity and refer to the Google Doc. It has a checklist of all the things that you have to remember when you're technically, uh, or your technical drafting and drawing. And uh, once you do that, you know that you've finished and completed the assignment successfully.